We are back. Hey, look, you can continue your rant. Right? <laughs> you know what the fuck? I'm just kidding. No, it's 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 your time to shine. No, but yes, Mercedes Monet made her debut. Yay. Yay. She interfered in the match at the end of the day. Yay. That's all she did. And That's now, all she did. And, and then next week we'll hear from her in, in Toronto, apparently. What is What else is she going to say? She's like, oh, the revolution is here. <clears throat> no, it's not. Okay. No, the revolution happened, I think, in 2016. You were part of it, but you're not part of this revolution. Yeah, no. This is, no. This is the devolution. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, is, there is no revolution. Yeah, Mercedes is in AEW. We know why she's here. She said it. Yeah. She does. She, she she's she said there it. for the bad. She's yeah. not there to... She doesn't give a shit about this company. No, she doesn't care. And watch, and watch the quality of her actual wrestling just fall Go off down. of a cliff. Right. Because when Mercedes is really passionate about what she's doing... She's really good. But right. when she's not, she's dog water. Right. Um, let's see. Will Ospreay. Um, so apparently he's getting paid. Yeah, like like we said before, he's getting paid $1.9 million. Oh, I thought here. you were going to talk about when he said don't give up on New Japan. Like, you, Oh, yeah. Like, like oh, yeah, like, yeah. There's that going on, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, like you gave up on New Japan. Right. I think, I think everyone's giving up on New Japan at this point. Yeah, nobody. Um, New Japan is... I don't think I've seen it this bad. This I, is really bad. Yeah, it is. I think this is like 2020 bad, I think. I don't know. Maybe maybe not 2020 bad, but... <sighs> this is really dark for New Japan, and Will Ospreay is sitting there. Please don't give up on them. Oh, well, if, if you were, if you if, were if going to say that, right. then why did you not re-sign with the company? Right. Why did you like take up half of your... Why did you like, upend your life and move yourself overseas? Yeah, it's all about the money yeah, for him. Yeah, exactly. And then Jim Ross, he is, this is probably the last year of Jim Ross as a commentator. Yeah, it should have happened years well, ago. Well, it should have happened years ago, but he did sign one more contract, and he said that this year was probably going to be his last year. Yep. Now, he is a wealth of information. He's been in the business for such a long time. Literally, the show, the match that we're going to watch, was his debut commentary position in WWE. Oh, really? Yep. That's cool. But yeah, um, he's obviously he's set for life no matter what. Oh yeah, um, you know probably getting all that pension money from the WWE and AEW if they have a pension system going. Yep, and, the, and I mean then, and if if I was and then the barbecue sales and yeah, all he has, that he, has stuff. he has his right. brand. I mean yeah, he has his brand. He's set for life. But yeah. yeah, last year of Jr. And you know once again great career. He I mean we we watched him. He was essentially the voice of our childhood when we right. were watching wrestling back in the day. All right, so this she, this is a big one. Yes, yeah, so um, Shayna Baszler is the first announced superstar that's going to be at the GCW event. I think that's at main, that's during Mania week at the yes, it, or, um, she, so she's going to be competing at Bloodsport. Yep, uh, she has connections already with this because her trainer from her transition to MMA to wrestling was Josh Barnett, right. who is the one who's hosting this. Yes, um, but she's not the only one. We don't know who else is going to be at that event. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, but again, this is a Triple H move. This is not a, you know, Vince McMahon has nothing to do with this. People, do you not see this difference? Yeah. This was huge yeah. news. This was, this is giant. This is bigger than you think. Right. Like, think of what you can do with this. It, it looks like you can get permission with maybe certain strict regulations. Yeah. But it looks like WWE, they might be opening up that little door. They they opened it up a little crack for a little peeky peek. But, yep. A little forbidden door there. Yeah, the forbidden. Now, <laughs> this is the real forbidden door right. was was the actual <laughs> was structure. Was like WWE superstars going to work with other brands. Like, this is the actual forbidden now, door. Now, this is, this is not the first one under the Triple H regime. No. We had uh, Shinsuke Nakamura yep. going to go against the Great Muda in All Japan. Yep. We had Charlie Dempsey going there as well in mm -hmm. that tournament. He did do that. And now with Shayna Baszler, I, maybe we're going to start seeing maybe well, people. There's, there's going to be more people even announced for this show. Shayna Baszler is just the first person. She right. might be the only WWE Jordan star. Jordan Grace going to WWE yep. for um, uh, Royal Rumble. Yeah, but that happened again before with Mickey James. With Mickey but, James. But that um, now that was a different situation because right. that contract was signed before she even left the company right. to appear – and Vince McMahon was like, "Okay, that's fine. You yeah. all, you already had the contract signed to be there. I can't do much about it." Right. So, but anyways, kind of cool. It is really cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about these WrestleMania matches that are happening: Gunther and Sami Zayn. 
Um, I like the match. It's going to be a good match. It's going to be a good match, but it was an interesting choice to put uh, Sami Zayn in this position and not someone like Chad Gable. Chad Gable. So we said Gable because they already had a very long stream rivalry, and Chad Gable was the last person to beat Gunther in a match mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form uh, since this title reign. Yeah. Now, there was a lot that upheaved from Mania. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we touched on earlier that the original idea was going to be Gunther Brock. Right. But obviously, with Brock in this, um, in the court hearings, it would be a bad idea for him to appear right, right now. With CM Punk's injury, his original match was supposed to be against Rollins. Mm -hmm. But they had to change the McIntyre because of the injury. And then, obviously, with the Cody backlash, mm -hmm. they had to put him in there somewhere. Yep. And The Rock had a match already right. signed with so, in, at Mania. So, again, very interesting, um, I guess, thought process. I don't, I don't know what exactly the thought process is going into this. Um, I think that they want someone that can lose at Mania because I think they want Gunther to go into Bash in Berlin as a champion of some sort. Okay. Um, but I just don't know. Um, but I think it's an interesting choice to put Sami Zayn in that position. Now, don't get me wrong. He's very popular and he's a great baby face. He's, 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 well, here's the thing about... It just... It just at the end of the day, it's just like, why? Well, I, I will say at least one thing about this is that Sami Zayn has had all the momentum in this situation. Mm -hmm. He has been in the main event consistently. Mm -hmm. He has picked up big wins against somebody like Shinsuke Nakamura, and that gauntlet match was good. He has been winning. He is mm -hmm. a winner. So him with all this momentum going into Mania, I don't think is a bad thing. No, I don't think so either. It's just an interesting choice. All right, so we're going to talk about more. We're going to talk more about this in the next segment, but we got a couple of names added to the um, added to the executives that were knowledgeable about the whole situation that we're going to be discussing. So it was Nick Khan. Yep, Nick Khan, Stephanie McMahon. I don't think that Paul Levesque was he was named. Not. Well, he was at first, but then he was taken off, which adds my grievances. Right. Um, we had uh, uh, something Burry. Yeah. And then there was something nurse. So there were there were four executives yes. that at least had some sort of knowledge that that what has been happening has been happening. Yes, um, but we'll talk more about that in our next segment because we just made that. We're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it more in depth. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Muhammad Ali is going to the Hall of Fame, which is an interesting choice. Well, Muhammad Ali was a special guest he referee was. for the first WrestleMania yeah. main event. They're they're doing a lot of I think WrestleMania one vibes with this yep for the most part uh paul Heyman, obviously there uh, a lot of people were having we're very upset that bray wyatt is not going in this year i we don't know that we don't know all the people that are going to the hall of fame i will say that i, I am okay with waiting one more year mm -hmm. for bray to go we already know he's going yeah. it's it's already in the works yeah but especially where they are in philadelphia paul Heyman had he had to be mm -hmm. the headliner. There's I would I would like to see more ECW alumni going into the Hall of Fame, considering well, where they're at. Really, the only one that had any sort of tenure was um, Rob Van Dam. You right. had you had the Dudley Boys, but I think they're already in, they're the, already Hall in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Sandman, Sabu, they were not in there long enough to right. justify it. Um, you could possibly say. Um, Shane Douglas because he was Possibly. Dean he was Dean Douglas in WWF early WWF. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess there isn't like huge star power when it comes to the WWF. I would say I would say Brian Pillman, but I'm think Brian Pillman's already in the Hall of Fame. Is he? I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say because really, when I look at ECW, WWE might own the property, but is it really? ECW, right. it's it's not, right. you know, and especially after the bastardization that they did with the brand, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're just like Paul Heyman has transcended even the company that he ran right. to such a different level. He made enough of an impact outside of ECW mm -hmm. to justify it. And the same thing with Rob Van Dam. The same thing with the Dudley Boys. Right. And I would even say the same thing with Shane Douglas. But Shane Douglas, I think, made more of an impact in ECW. Right. Um, uh, maybe Tommy Dreamer. I yeah, can see but, Tommy well, Dreamer. Again, but they, they don't do people that are not retired. 
Well, that's why The Rock's not in the Hall of Fame yet, for example. Right. That's why John Cena's not in the Hall but of the, Fame. But then you have examples like Rey Mysterio, and right. then somebody maybe like Paul Heyman, but right. we don't know his future after the Hall of Fame induction. Right. Anyways, um, thought I was cool. Moving on. All right. So again, well, another another randomness. In- I it it just feels. If, I don't. I I don't. Especially with this one, it feels. What's the word I'm trying to say? This is what I think they're it, trying. It feels very like stuffy. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to stuff stars into this now. Well, yeah, that's what they're doing. I think this is going to be a weird pseudo way for a controversy mm-hmm. to happen to split up the undisputed tag yeah. team champions. I think, I think so too. I think one team is going to get one set of titles, but on then on the other side, the other team is going to get the other set of titles in some weird screwy way mm-hmm. to where since they separated, we can reestablish the WWE World Tag Team Champions and the WWE Tag Team Champions right. and make them vanilla just like they did with the women's champions and the main champions. Right. I guess that makes sense. But again, it's just kind of, um, it, it doesn't fit in with the storylines that they've been going with, I guess. Well, I, also, the success of the showcase tag team matches from last year, maybe they're trying to see what they can do. And remember, the Intercontinental Championship ladder matches for the couple of those manias, mm-hmm. those were very good. So, yeah. And then obviously, Money in the Bank ladder. Like, ladder matches do well at Mania. They really do. So I'm. I'm not offended, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, it just didn't fit in with the storylines as they're being presented right. to us. It, it should only be Judgment Day versus the Awesome Truth. Uh, that, it, that should. Would, it should. Um, and then again... Oh, I did not resize. I don't know no, why. It's okay. <laughs> um, but again, this is another match that just kind of feels... There. Off. It just, yeah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit in with what we... Have been well, expecting. I mean, Kevin Owens and Logan Paul have been having this rivalry yeah, they already, have. so it's not like that's unusual. And then I know that the Randy Orton, based off of his actions at Elimination Chamber, you yep. know that that obviously plays into it. Um, so I mean, I guess it makes a little more sense, but it just kind of it, it should have been I'm, a one on one, I think, with somebody. I'm excited for the match. Mm-hmm. I think they wanted to get Randy in there somewhere. Yeah, and, of course. I mean, other than you know. This will be his first mania back in a very long time, eighteen right. months. So. And then, um, you know, then of course we have uh, we talked about this earlier too with um, uh, L.A. Knight and AJ, AJ Styles. Styles, which also feels a little off. Well, when you have when you have two manias mm-hmm. who are two nights, you have to have matches somewhere, right. and at the very least. I mean, AJ Styles and LA Knight will be a great curtain jerker oh, match as an example. So it's not like these are random. They're, they're they are building these rivalries, mm. but. They are just so overcasted by the enormity of the bloodline, yeah. Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins. Yeah. It's so big yeah. because they, they literally have said that this is a industry-changing match. Mm-hmm. And it is. I mean, this is going to be a very large match. So everything else, just by comparison, Feels is going to be small. It, this is going to happen. Same thing with like big boxing fights. Right. There was an undercard for Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, but nobody gave a shit about them. They cared about the one fight. Right. So, anyways, but that's all the news I have for this week. When we come back, we're going to discuss the lawsuit. Yes.